have it. Allowed him to come up. And boom, he just sunk it in. He just sunk it in right on top of his chin. Heavy pressure, elbow in, squeezing of the hands, head inside to make it tighter. And this is why we call him Mick Tapper. You saw it here. So what's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And I'm super excited to announce that I am breaking down the one and only 29-0, the eagle, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Breaking down his fights in his beginning fights, him fighting Conor McGregor, Justin Gaethje, and Dustin Poirier. I hope you guys are going to like these breakdowns. This fight feedback is going to be on fire. Now, let's take it to the big screen. So here we have Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Abro Tuhido. Again, this was 10 years ago, but at the same time, I want to show you guys how much Khabib has actually gotten better, his diversification. This fight right here, I think it was 21 takedowns that he was able to catch Trujillo, and it still stands as a record today. But in reality, Khabib should have finished this dude within two to three takedowns. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's push play. Breaks distance right away, looking for the takedown. Notice right now, he's not, he's not throwing legs in as he would normally would, not, not catching wrist as he does now. Doing a good job, a little bit with the pressure here, but this dude should not. Again, this was Khabib uh, 1.0. He's still undefeated, beautiful slam. Unnecessary, because really that's, that, that slam is not gonna do anything. You know, catching wrist, and there's no control. He's not doing anything with the legs, he's had nothing with the wrist once again. He's just kind of stalling here. This is why a lot of people in the beginning said Khabib is boring. He's a boring fighter in the beginning of his career. You know, there's Khabib was pretty much just holding and striking at this time. You know, allowing this guy to get to his feet. Yep, that's a lot of energy. It's a lot of energy expansion there. But Khabib has a conditioning. Yep, tight waist. That's why he's not. The dude can't get away. But Habib doesn't is not putting him in a control where he's able to hurt him or damage him. Yep, back to the double transitions. Yep, see no legs being thrown in. This is the right thing to do though, like like putting 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 weight here, but then he's allowing him to get up. Yeah, pretty much just. Uh, I mean, this is a green uh, Khabib. You know, this is super green Khabib. I mean, think about it, guys. 21 takedowns. 21 takedowns on that. So I'm like, you don't want to have the record for things like that. You know? Because it should be two to three takedowns. Again, a lot of energy being expended there. That's not good. This is why I don't recommend fighters to to do certain, uh, you know, no, no. Had the opportunity to throw legs, never threw legs in. That's probably something that's something that he developed in his earlier career. Good breakdowns though, I will give him that, but the key is to keep him down. You know, letting him free, like he's not controlling wrists. And this is why, these are some of the transitions that Habib was able to make. Just chopping him down, like this is, uh, you know, the UFC, they don't like guys that, uh, that just wrestle. I'm a wrestler, I don't like guys that just wrestle. Because it's like, just go back to wrestling, you know? A lot of power, nice throw. I mean, that'd be worth points, but a lot of power. I wonder if they're, count, I wonder if they're counting these as takedowns. So just a quick breakdown on, uh, on Khabib versus Trujillo. Abel Trujillo is, uh, he was green. He was green, 21 takedowns, guys, in a fight. That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, it just shows how much better Habib has got. He was still green. He was still up in the rise. I mean, a lot of things that he was missing, throwing in the legs, wrist grabbing, uh, you know, really committing to that control. Um, but Habib will always be true to himself. And it was something that he will do. And he was doing it now. He will make you work. Even though he wasn't, he was allowing that dude to get up, Habib was still making that guy work. So that's my breakdown of one of his earlier fights, which was 10 years ago, it's at the age of 24. Now let's move on to the next, which is gonna be my favorite one, Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Next! 
All right, so here we have it. Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor. Again, this is this is Khabib 2.0. Let's hit the play button. Yeah, 30, 30, same age, one inch apart. Yeah, he did a really good job. I was here at this fight live. A little far, shot a little too far away there. Look, too, too, too far. I mean, he, he, he re that just tells you that he really respected Connor's uh, defense. And here, Connor could have got out, but he played the distance a little. He played the, oh, I know wrestling too, and I can get out too. I mean, he was doing a good job of stuffing the head and getting here, but the more he allowed, and not notice how Habib, notice how Habib tangles these legs. This is his key, man. That's a signature that people are, and lo notice how low he is on him too. People try to get greedy and try to triangle up top, but he's able to sneak it across there. Super beautiful, man. Now you're, now he's putting that weight up against him for that control. I believe this was the second round here. I love this about Habib right here. Fake the takedown, looked up, ended up catching him with the right hand. Can you rewind that? Watch. And, and this, this technique was done by the eyes. Look down, whoop, came up with that right. Beautiful. You know, caught him flush, and Khabib's not a striker. Well, he's not known for his striking, but yeah, looking down, he already, boom, brought the takedowns. He already threatened him with that. So by the time he dipped down, Connor was already thinking like, I gotta defend as he moved his legs back. Caught him with that right hand. Boom. Now he's keeping the range. Now this is the, yes, now the second round. Now he's putting the heat, you know? Completely took the distance from him. In the beginning of, the, uh, beginning of this fight, you saw, oh, beautiful snatch. Yep, went back, boom, found it. Transition, transition to that one leg. And eventually to pop his hips out, to pop his hips in, I'm sorry. To be able to get Connor to his butt. The, the cage actually could help you find grips. And there you go. This is a position that you don't. Like Connor, Connor should have been trying to get out using the cage to eventually get up to his feet. But you don't want to stay in close guard with a guy like that. You don't, man, because this dude's going to start raining on some punches. He's good here because he's pressing you, using his leverage. And as you're working, now he's throwing punches. Connor, which he should have been doing, is looking for that cage and starting to get up, looking for underhooks. And right now he's just about to take a beating. Right hand, left hand. I mean, he's just he's just welling on this. At this time he's talking to him and uh, he's just pressing him. Just pressing him, trying to find that chin. Look, close the distance with Connor. Doing a good job. He no longer respects him. This is round four now. Yep. Breaks the distance. Finds the takedown. Yep. Looking to scoop the legs. He's become so active now with everything that he has that he's constantly active. He'll just get you to feel busy here to eventually level change to take you down. But look, look at this. Look at this. These are the little things you guys don't see. Heavy top pressure on top of his head, which is perfect. Keeping him there. As you guys noticed, that, that other fight with Trujillo, he was allowing Trujillo to get upright. That's why he was getting out. But right now, he's isolating here, and he's putting pressure here. To you guys, you think he's stalling, but in reality, he's investing in his actual fighting. Yep, notice, notice Connor. Can we run it real quick? Notice Connor was trying to grab the fence there. It's actually the right thing to do. You know, call it illegal or not, but that's the only thing that you can do. And notice how he slides that leg to get him across, and boom. It's just, it's a subtle rule, one more time. It's a subtle rule, uh, I guess you could call it a trip with this leg here and using the weight to take him back. And then boom, the leg comes in, the other leg comes in. And then look, he's always loose, but it, uh, he's loose with heavy pressure, which is, which is deadly because it's not like he's not playing jujitsu, man. He's, he's been able to add folk style wrestling to allow you to make you work, to eventually find the things that he wants. Right now, look, he's oh, he's controlled the hips. He's comfortable here. He is so comfortable. Legs in, legs in are, are, are loose. He's not necessarily triangling. And this is just, he allowed Connor, can you run it one more time? He allowed Connor to get to his all force position. He set him up to eventually get the face crank. This wasn't a choke, this was a, this was a crank on the face, which is, which sucks too, you know? You feel like your face is gonna break. 
here we have it. Allowed him to come up. And boom, he just sunk it in. He just sunk it in right on top of his chin. Heavy pressure, elbow in, squeezing of the hands, head in side to make it tighter. And this is why we call him Mick Tapper. You saw it here. Beautiful job by Khabib. Beautiful. Yep. Ended up tapping there. But it but Conor McGregor tapped by it was exhaustion. It was what Khabib ended up doing in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of the fight of playing the distance game, getting away from Conor McGregor to eventually fatiguing him, finding him, and then the second round, putting the weight on him, wrapping him up, doing X, Y, and Z to be able to get him to tap. It was, it's all an investment. This is what these guys are doing in Dagestan. This is why, you know, when it comes to top control and dominant wrestling right now, I'm gonna have to say uh, Khabib is one of the greatest of all time. When it just comes to dominate his position so that fight with uh, with conor mcgregor he did an amazing job of being a competitor in the beginning of the round is catching his distance you know picking his shots even though he did shoot from far away as i showed earlier he was still able to exhaust mcgregor make him think of a lot of things you know looking down to eventually come up with that right hand so you know this was this was the best habiba in my eyes that, he, that he's ever looked, especially against a guy like Conor McGregor. Next! So now let's go to Khabib versus Poirier. Let's start in the third round. Yeah, dodging. You guys have, there's one thing that you guys have to understand about, about Khabib is he's a competitor, man. You see? He just, it, it's about winning. It's about putting you in his nest and, and having at you. Look at, look at how he controls those legs. Poirier should have been doing his best job to get to a little angle to eventually get off of him. Look for underhooks. Yeah, Poirier is doing the wrong thing of pressing Habib. Heavy, heavy punches. Yeah, this is the this is one thing I will say about Habib. Dude, the dude can take the dude can take punishment. He can give it. He can take it. Yep, jabbing him up, finding the distance. Like, he's composed, man. This is why these dudes are troubled. Yep, gets into that little fake, catches the takedown. And here he's, you know, man, he's got, uh, Poria's got a tight little lock there. Got a tight little lock. But Habib's tenacity, his, his ability to be able to take pain, you know, did, did the right thing. Went to his side to create space and then now he's looking to kind of sizzle and cinch, his, cinch himself off. You know, the top control, just, yeah. The sweat, if you're patient enough, the sweat itself will get you, but look at what he's doing. Catching the wrist, put the leg in, now he's good. Now he's golden. He's golden because off of the fatigue that he's done in all three rounds, the last thing this dude wants to do is get up. He just doesn't want to get hit. Yeah. Good top pressure, heavy up top here. Heavy up top with the free hand, he's gonna strike him. And he's gonna continue to keep striking them. Yep. Pretty much the same way, no, but notice what he did though. He's sticking him, he's hitting him. That's the difference between Habib getting submissions and people just getting submissions. He's gonna hurt you, he's gonna punish you first. Yeah, and then that's all, that's all she wrote. Synced it in, Poirier's out. He was super in, it's not like the McGregor fight where, you know, it was a neck crank. He, uh, Dustin Poirier just gave too much shin and Khabib did an amazing job in this fight of, again, keeping his composure, you know, jumping in Dana White's arms. You know, this is a, this is a beautiful win for him. You know, he's done a lot. He's done some amazing things in, uh, in combat sports to be able to be 29 and 0. But, you know, a lot of people are counting uh, Khabib out on this fight because of Poirier's good jujitsu and the power that he had in his hands. But 
little do you know, Habib does a good job of just being a competitor. It's all about him getting to his bread and butter, breaking distance, catching the takedowns, wrapping your legs, catching wrists to eventually hurt you, ground and pound you, open you up to eventually look for submissions. That's your breakdown of Habib versus Poirier. Next! And here we have Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Justin Gaethje. Similar in age, similar in height, obviously the same weight and the same reach. I thought if there was one fighter in this fight, and I'll be honest with you because they're both friends of mine, that could beat Khabib, it'd be this guy. It'd be this guy for the simple fact that he was kicking. But let's take it to the let's take it to the tape and then let's, let's break it down now. Yep, took a kick. Gaethje was doing the right thing, but uh, at this point, uh, Habib might have taken a bunch of kicks, and this is the reason why he was bringing the pressure right away. Nothing fancy about it, nothing fancy about it, but he's making him think wrestling. That's another kick, and right away, Habib is looking for the takedown, looking to lace the legs as he typically does. Once he takes, once he goes for the takedown, that means he's hurt. And if you look at here, there's already a welt on that leg. Is it one LA looking to scoop up, looking to scoop up the legs? That's what makes Habib dangerous. Right now, Justin Gaethje should have been working his top control there. So, there there's ways to get out by just like shimming, shimming, shimming out. You know, it, it's gonna take time, but you will, you could eventually get out, especially if you're sweaty. Got the underhook. He's already mounted him. This is first round. You know, already looking for the arm bar. Goes for the arm bar. Already in a good position right now. There's five seconds left. Will he get it? Time runs out. And here we have him breaking the distance again. Look, Gaethje doing a good job of break of of taking the foundation now. You know, at the, at this point, Habib, there's an urgency when you're hurt, and that's why he's taking distance right away. Yep, throws a jab. And he had he had enough of taking that second. Could we rewind it one more time? He had enough of taking that last kick here that he says, you know what, it's not worth it. If he takes my legs out, I won't be able to wrestle. So he's getting straight into his wrestling. Yep, right away, throwing in the hook in above the hips. And right now, Habib, he's good. He's good now. Right now, Justin should have been shimmying out, going to the side. But this is pretty impressive by Habib. I know he was. I know his submission game was like this. You know, which said he's already tapped. Look at this referee. I don't know what he's doing. I put the dude to sleep, you know? Put the dude to sleep because this dude doesn't see the tap, which is crazy. Took the leg kick right away. He says, I want my rest. Notice how he cuts the corner there. As he cuts the corner, he throws the leg in. Can you run it one more time? Look at how beautiful this is. As he cuts the corner, he throws that far leg in. And now he's in that top control position. Boom, takes a kick. That was enough for him. Broke distance, level change, cut the corner, threw the leg in. Impressive. Gaethje went to his back to eventually, uh, he just felt comfortable here, you know, to eventually going over, you know, the triangle. You know, notice, notice Gaethje taps right there. He tapped, and then he tapped again. And then, I don't know what this dude's doing. This dude's sleeping. Z's, Z's. Anyways, that's a good breakdown with Khabib. I mean, this was pretty much his last fight. 29 and 0. He's done, a, he's done some amazing things in sports, you know. But I would have still, as a friend of Khabib, and as a, yeah, as a legend. See, so yeah, sorry guys. As a legend, I would like to see him compete and beat some of beat some of the other guys. I think there's still a list of other fighters that he could have beaten, which I still believe he could have beaten. But he decided to retire at 29 and 0. I, I believe he only had 12 or 13 fights in the UFC, fairly young. But he will be always be able to say, "I am undefeated." And that was Khabib Nurmagomedov's last fight with Justin Gaethje. So now we'd like to break it down and take it to the whiteboard and what I call the three T's. Let's go. So these are the three T's that I like to break my opponent down. The technique, the tactics, and the threshold. I wanna typically I go from technique to tactics to threshold, but today I wanna start off 
with te- with threshold. When I when I talk about threshold, I talk about the gas tank. I talk about you know the energy. Uh, how is it that he expends his energy? And this is partially what made Khabib extremely dangerous. Is a simple fact that his threshold was second to none. Even when he fought Conor McGregor in that fourth fight, he was able to withstand this dude and still be good to freaking tap him out, jump over the cage and start a fight with somebody else. I mean, his level of conditioning is ridiculous. And for that reason, I got to give Conor McGregor, I, I got to give Khabib Nurmagomedov an A. For the tactics, you know, for the tactics, he always knew how to fight somebody. He always knew how to drag people to their strengths. You know, and for that reason, tactically, he was able to adjust to a lot of people like a Justin Gates who likes to kick the legs, like uh, uh, a Conor McGregor who loves the distance game and keeping people at bay and then catching them with, the, with those either with either those front kicks or that heavy left hand. You know, he was able to fight everybody distance. He was able to he was able to fight everybody different according to who is it that he was fighting. So whether it was Conor McGregor, Justin Gaethje, um, um, or uh, or 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 you know Conor McGregor, he had the ability to do that, and that's also what made him. He was a he's a better uh, competitor than he is a fighter. So for that reason, man, I'm giving this guy for this one an A plus right here and then obviously i gotta go with the very very last one which is the technique for habib Nurmagomedov. um i still think i would have loved and i would enjoy to still be able to see you know habib fight some of the other guys especially when you have guys have like you know gamrat you know you have guys like dariush you got guys like uh you know all the all those guys uh what is it fiziev uh, you know, he never had a ch- he didn't get a chance to fight Rafael Dos Anjos the second time, which I know even Rafael has gotten better. I mean, uh, a Gregor Gillespie, there is a lot. But if there's one area out of all these that Khabib could have really got better, it'd be right here. It'd be the technique part. I would have loved to have seen Khabib really develop more of a swift game on his feet, maybe kicking people, you know. But, but what's made him great are these two areas right here are these two areas right here. His tactical game of always taking people, uh, making people fight his fights, be able to catch takedowns, and his threshold. His condition was pretty much second to none, man. I don't think anybody in the UFC had conditioning like uh, like Khabib. And when you wrestle a lot, it's extremely tiring. But where he did have room to grow was right here, his technique. So. A lot of you guys are probably not gonna like this, but I'll probably give him an A minus or a B, a a B, a B plus. Why? Because there's still so much more room for him to get better on the technical aspect of the game of mixed martial arts. You know, because the question is, is what happens when you can't take somebody down? Or what happens if you get somebody that you get, get that you can take down, like a Charles Oliveira? How is it that the fight would go? So a lot of people would have those those questions, you know. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my breakdown. This is Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. You guys just watch Fight Feedback. Make sure to subscribe to my damn YouTube channel. I'm out! So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember there's more breakdowns, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out!